Hey, good afternoon. Uh, hey, Tom Hudson here. This happens to be early January in 2019. And uh, I've had a requirement to um, build a trailing edge. Uh, there's several different ways uh, everybody has, has finished uh, trailing edges on control surfaces. And I've had an occasion to uh, do that. And I've elected to uh, use a carbon fiber core on the trailing edge of a control surface. Uh, mainly because uh, the angle that I need is custom. Any extruded aluminum uh, block for the trailing edge uh, core uh, isn't the proper angles that I need. And in one case, that actually angles change from one end to the other. So by uh, making a custom in place uh, carbon fiber core on the trailing edge, uh, uh, is really a good way to accomplish that and so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've done it a few times. I've actually found some tricks uh, after doing it a few times. thought I would just record this for anybody that may want to do this. Uh, it'll maybe help you uh, uh, avoid some of the mistakes that I've made and there's probably uh, more better ways of doing it but right now this is all I know and I'm happy with the uh, the results I've been getting. Uh, anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, is do that. Uh, uh, I've not ever done a video before, so this is kind of new to me as well. So for an amateur, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, as you can see, I've already got this unidirectional carbon fiber cut. Uh, it's a uh, approximately 18 inches wide. It's all unidirectional carbon fiber. What we want to do is uh, wet it out in this trough and I'm going to end up with a, a bundle about the size of my little finger, maybe a little better than three-eighths of an inch in diameter uh, once we have it wetted out. Uh, then we're going to put it between two surfaces in this control surface, the upper and lower surface on an angle like this with this wad in the center. So when the surfaces are pressed together, it will form on the inside the proper angles for that core. Later, after it cures, we'll put some rivets in it. But meanwhile, uh, what I wanted to show you real quick is a simple way I found to wet out the carbon fiber uh, in the resin and then to get it in the control surface is a little bit of a trick. So anyway, uh, everybody knows how to cut carbon fiber. This is all unidirectional and meanwhile uh, I'm going to go over and mix up the resin, come over here and pour it in and we'll get started. So uh, let's walk over here. It's going to take me a second to mix up the uh, resin. This happens to be uh, the West system that I'm using. That's the resin. I guess you could use any kind of resin. Uh, the, uh, they have a fast and a slow hardener. This happens to be the slow hardener because we need a little bit of time to work. And uh, it's a six hour cure time, but you really only have about two hours of real working time to work with it. So. We don't have to really uh, get into a big panic situation to free up, but I do like to get it out of the cup because when it sits in a, a good ma mass in the cup, as everybody knows, uh, the thermal action will as they uh, actually get it to kick off a lot quicker. So we don't really want to do that. Uh, we'll get it out of the cup here in just a second. Make sure we get it good and mixed up. I like to scrape the sides and the bottom. Always use a square cup with square corners so you can really get a good thorough mix. So what I'm going to do first here is fill up this trough, which this happens to be a piece of steel that is found typically on steel buildings. And this is just a strip that's been cut. This little V in here is uh, from the design of the uh, steel. So I'm just going to take and fill up here. Uh-oh. 
the trough with a little bit of resin. That thins down what's in the cup. So it won't have a tendency. I don't want to fill up the whole trough at this point. I want to just put some in there. Now I'm just going to take this, this fiber and lay it in here. As you can see, I don't want to put the whole wad in there. If I put the whole wad in there, it's going to be harder to wet it all out. So by putting in just a little bit here, as you can see, uh, it'll wet it out uh, faster, quicker. Uh, I've already pre-cut this for the proper length. And so with resin in the bottom, it'll soak up from the bottom into the into the cloth fiber. As I'm going along here, that'll help uh, wet it out quicker. Uh, as you can see here, you gotta get your fingers into it. And uh, so I just squish out resin, push it up into the fiber. Eventually I'll fold in the, the rest of it. This, this has been cut in strips about six inches wide. And so now it's getting pretty wet. I'm gonna fold in, fold over. the rest of it. And this is pretty, I won't say boring, but it was reasonably fast, but it's a, a quicker way. Initially, I tried to wet out the whole wad at one time, and it takes a lot more to uh, get the, the fibers totally impregnated with the resin. And what I found is doing a little bit at a time, push it down in the in the groove, you can see the resin oozing up through. It can actually soak in to the fibers quicker by not putting it all, all the fibers in there at one time. And so this is not really difficult to do, except to just, that seems to be the, the trick that I've discovered is just go a little bit at a time with the with the actual fibers. And, uh, is, I think you can start to see it wetting out a lot quicker. So now as I kind of press down a little bit more firm, that tends to continue to soak in with the agitation uh, of fingers, agitating a little bit, tends to massage the resin in. And you can see it's, it, it actually shows a lot more resin, which now is soaked up through the fibers. Okay, we'll put in another layer here. This is a little short piece I happen to have. We're putting in the middle here. Another thing to kind of take note of, don't, uh, if you can, try not to twist the fibers as you get it in there. The more parallel we tend to try to keep the fibers later on when we actually want to um, squeeze it between the two aluminum control uh, surfaces, it will tend to flow better as it gets squashed between the upper and lower aluminum control surface. That way it will 
it will flow. If it happens to be twisted, like um, maybe a piece of rope, then it will tend to uh, not squeeze out as uh, easily. Now I'll trim off the end here a little bit. Keep it in the box. Okay. You can you can uh, invent several different ways of having a little channel to work in. I kind of like this V channel because at the very bottom it comes to a point in this piece of uh, steel siding here. That that way uh, it, it kind of keeps a, a minimum amount of waste of resin. Uh, if you had a square bottom, then uh, there would be some advantages and disadvantages to that. But this way I'm uh, actually minimizing any resin waste just due to the design of the little trough I have here. Well, now I'm going to pour in some more resin because it's starting to get saturated. Take and uh, pour the rest of this in. I, I happen to mix up 150 grams total resin here for this particular job. Uh, not sure how it's going to come out. I may have to mix up a little more before we're done, but uh, this happens to be a control surface that's nine and a half feet long, and I'm expecting to, to have a, a uh, filler triangle from five eighths to three quarters of an inch long coming to that point at the very trailing edge. Uh, you know, using a piece of uh, carbon fiber here that would represent a maybe a piece of rope about three eighths of an inch in diameter, uh, maybe maybe a little bit heavy, uh, a little bit larger than three eighths possibly, uh, and that should ooze out and form a little triangle, probably about three quarters of an inch uh, long. And like I say, in this particular control surface, the trailing edge is uh, uh, not not the same angle from one end to the other end, so therefore even an extruded uh, piece of aluminum for a filler uh, really wouldn't wouldn't work very well because uh, the, the angle actually changes uh, the angle from one end to the other. That makes this process really uh, better because now it'll conform to that. Okay, let's put in another longer piece here. This will finish. This will finish up the the amount of. Come on, get out there. This will finish up the uh, total amount of carbon fiber in the project. Like I say again, I'm just putting in the edge here because we can wet it out quicker this way versus throwing the whole thing in there as one chunk would take a lot longer to massage it to get it soaked up. Again, trying to keep it parallel so we're not twisting it. If we twist it and it's not going to flatten out uh, as easily. And this is how we do this. Uh, yeah, it's kind of getting kind of getting dry in there, so I think we can pour in a little bit more. To mix up a little bit more before we're done here, but that's something we can easily do. I did this more to probably get a better, better feel for how much resin to mix for a particular job. But we're just about out here. 
and well, I think what I may do is uh, I'll continue with this. I'll presently take a break on the video because this is kind of repetitious now and I don't want to burn up your time watching me just continue to push this down in here. I'm going to mix up another little bucket of resin and then I'll pour some more in there and fold this remaining uh, piece of carbon fiber into the groove here and then we'll start the video up again so that way I can save some time for both of us because this is kind of, as you can see, uh, not much new here other than just packing this down. So let's take a break and I'll be right back.